Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Catching a game live here on Supreme Straits this morning. We've already got some very, very active, uh, <laughs> some active spectators in here. Uh, drawing all over the map. Delete this. Yeah, uh, we're just going to clear the map there for everyone's benefit. We were having a bit of technical difficulties. That's why we coming into this one a little bit late, but luckily we did not miss anything too fantastic. Today, spawning in the southwestern side, our red team. For our red team, our red player. Representing their team with this bright, brilliant red color, Emir. Going for a bot lab here in this sort of central position. Kind of a support position for the front line. Sort of a support position for, for this, this water player here. If they end up being attacked from hovercraft or something of that nature. Wow. Somebody is uh, really, really excited about this game today. <laughs> I can't blame them. This is going to be an exciting one. You can see the true skill in all these players is pretty high, relatively high anyway. This is definitely uh, a higher true skill match, so we're, we're probably going to see some pretty good strategies coming out here. We already see Resbots out on the front eating up all of this metal. That's really cool. There is quite a lot of metal here. To go with the total amount of metal, a couple thousand. I think it's about 2,000 before anything gets eaten. Ooh, excuse me. Just woke up, had myself a cup of coffee, and decided today, or, well, I mean, I look at bar every day, <laughs> but today, today, this morning, looks like a pretty good, uh, pretty good time to watch them beyond all reason. Already see some aggression out here. Pawns taking care of grave robbers. Love to see it. Deny that, uh, deny that economy reclaim as much as possible. Very, very nice. For our blue team, spawning in the north eastern side we have mom's boy toy our blue player <laughs> pretty pretty funny name uh but yeah Mo mom's boy toy that's a player that we've seen around here and there very very good player in a backline position so probably going to be going for some interesting shenanigans not sure if they're going to be uh teching up or going for air maybe or uh, what whatever they may do probably going to be seeing some interesting stuff coming out of them now we have Linkler and uh, Revelate. Revelate is an interesting name. I believe Linkler is a uh, reference to the mustached man, uh, but also cross genetically crossbred with Abraham Lincoln, which I think is from a episode of Rick and Morty. So if you're a big, big R and M fan, probably recognize that name right there. Kells. Working on producing a couple more bots to uh, cre create more build power for the front lines here. Don't hate that at all. Getting these metal extractors up and running is really important. These ones here in the center are all worth 4.3, so very, very important to contest all of these. Make sure that you get every single one of them, as opposed to these ones, which you can see are just 2.3. So this center area does pay quite a bit more to hold control over I think it's, if we look at the metal map here, we can see that there's a 4.3 here. This is, two, okay, 2.3, so it's 4, 4, 4, and then 4, 4, 4. So there's an equal number. So right now, things are looking pretty even as far as the metal distributions go on the front lines. Yeah, looking pretty good. Pamba Bamba actually manages to secure this metal extractor before Kells, which is pretty interesting. But as long as it's all going back to the same team, it won't really matter. It'll just, uh, it'll, hel it'll help them all out since they're on the same front. Now here we see some missile trucks harassing down a, uh, a coastal torpedo launcher. Can this actually hit those? It cannot. Interesting. So that's one way to siege these is with a missile truck. It wants to. It's thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. That's a that's a good decision by Crab Scratch there to get some uh, get some sieging sieging units up so that the there's no advantage in the water here. You can always move the commander out, of course, and uh, just use your commander for that damage, since the commander cannot be targeted by anything other than a depth charge launcher or a submarine. Right hand side, less less success for the the mirrored player here, Salt, who is mostly just going for some dolphins and some destroyers, 
the Armada Armada faction doesn't have access to that missile missile ship, which is pretty interesting. Uh, we, the, you would have to go for, I guess you would go for a destroyer in its place. Yeah, we, there's there's not really that long range sieging option with the uh, with with the Armada faction, so it's a little bit harder to contest that kind of thing. So that being said, Markvis now has a decent lead here. Ah, uh, this is interesting. Mom's boy time moving over a construction bot and some construction turrets. Yeah, those are probably... Oh, I thought they might be going over to this island, but it looks like they're actually going all the way around. Interesting. I wonder if they're going to try and land over here, do some sort of uh, aggressive shenanigans. That'd be really cool to see. So far, this island up north has been completely uncontested. Let's get a look down here. The lines of war are drawn. Very, very nice. Love these, love these big cinematic shots, right? Take a look at all that. Yeah, okay, interesting. So we do see these uh, transports now moving in. Let's see if this team is going to see this. Vision radius of this thing is pretty small, but there is radar. So we do see a bunch of blue dots. Transports are detected right about now. Yep, and they notice. Very, very nicely done. They uh, noticed right away. They don't know what's over here. <laughs> they just they just see their little radar blips. Said, what is this? They're hoping it's not a commander. All these all these dots are so slow, they're hoping that this isn't a commander. And there it goes. Moving a fighter over now. Actually confirms that this is a, uh, a little little air base. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how well this is going to do. We do see a commander moved in here now. All right, and the commander. Shipped in and manages to take them down. I would have loved to see an anti-aircraft turret here from uh, from Mom's Boy Toy, but I, li I love the idea. <laughs> it was a good thought. Now, in the meantime, looks like Markvis has actually pushed through and ravaged the base here for Somp. Yeah, now Somp is completely taken out of the water. The commander was on his way over here to establish a forward base on this little island and unfortunately left the mainland completely exposed. Now there are some resurrection submarines which is really cool to see so that lab is actually going to come up and running pretty quickly. I think what we need to do is resurrect a lot of these as many of these uh, tidal generators as possible which I think is going to be one and then just start resurrecting units. Yeah, yeah this is good. Good decisions. Good decision making. Now this thing, this radar for Mom's Boy Toy is actually in a pretty good position here. It does kind of give them a little bit of vision. I I guess it's not great though. <laughs> it's just a little bit of vision. Still interesting to see that on the enemy, enemy soil over there. I love those early transport shenanigans. I think those are really fun. Tons and tons of blitzes pushing forward here now. See, they just, in a big group, they just ravage these bases. It looks like, for the most part, these blitzes can, like, shoot over each other. They don't have to, uh, they don't have to worry about, like, alignment, right? You can just group them up to shoot. Ooh, that's a big, that's a big hit by Ski Bat. Definitely getting a wonderful hit in on these flashes there. These hounds being very annoying. Ooh, but they definitely do get that generator. Some eco goes up with it, but the generator mostly being the, uh, the main, the main, uh, I guess the main detrifactor, <laughs> the main, uh, the main thing that blows up there and, and causes a lot of damage. Really, really struggling on that word there. Watching to see how this is going to be rebuilt. Looks like mostly, yeah, just re resurrecting the units at the moment, making sure that we can have some sort of a responsive navy here, which is absolutely the right idea. 
You can see our own destroyers have been resurrected and sent back at us. So really important that these frigates are out. Frigate. Like a baguette, but much, much more frig. <laughs> yeah, excellent hold here. With all these ships going down, these can either be folded into your own your own navy, or they can be resurrected, of course, and used to your own devices. These dolphins can do tremendous work. Because they can flank the enemy, they can get in really close and cause a lot of flanking damage. They actually can end up being really, really powerful. Almost like a support vessel at that point. Yeah, the dolphin gets it. Ooh, commander trade over here. It looks like, yeah. Looks like Markvis and Sant decided to trade out their commanders. Although it was probably... Probably, uh, Markvis was a lot happier with that trade than Sant was. If I had to guess. Dolphins coming in now. These were unscouted. So they get right behind the base. And they're gonna tear this down pretty quickly. Oh, we just see some platypus coming out here. That's kind of interesting. Not a great ship-to-ship -ship option, but it is an, it is a ship-to-ship -ship option, for sure. The problem is that these submarines here are uh, following around these units as they're being, they're being queued all over the place. Oh, there's a destroyer out here, and this can launch those depth charges, though. And indeed, those depth charges cause a lot of mayhem, a lot of damage. Resurrection submarines go down, and that is basically stomp out of the game. There is a single constructor left, so he can hold on, but he's going to need some support from the team. Do we have any support coming his way? We do have a T2 air lab, so we could see torpedo bombers. That would be a really effective way of helping this teammate out. Wouldn't hate to see that at all. Wow, we've got quite an armada built up over here. We've got destroyers, we've got the gunboats, the submarines, slasher, not the lashers, what are they called? Herrings. The um, the missile ships. Imaginary Fox sort of put in an awkward position here where basically the only option is to go for hovercraft. And we do have some hovercraft moving around here. We have rocket launcher hovercraft. The mongrels. Mongrels? Mongrel? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Anyway. Yeah, also accompanied by some caiman. The hover tanks. Take a sip of my drinky here. Make sure I stay well wetted, my whistle, for your listening pleasure. Front lines here have sort of stagnated. A lot of ticks moving around on the front. That's a little interesting. We see artillery pieces. We see rocketeers. We see some gauntlets. Well, a gauntlet. We see heavy laser turrets. A lot of uh, a lot of these these uh, pop up lightning turrets as well. Very very entrenched. I think once T two starts hitting the battlefield, it's going to be a lot harder to uh, to hold on to this this front line. But as long as we get our equal amount of T two down south, then things should be all right. They find the production facility over here and start to ravage. These Cayman can be quite a pain. These rocket launchers can be quite a pain as well. Every one of these rockets is, does so much damage. Yep, and just like that, the shipyard goes down. So very, very nice play, shutting down the production of the, uh, of the enemy here. It was very nicely done. Yeah, I think this is a great idea. Just move on to land where these, these units can't hit you and uh, start to start to disassemble whatever economy was over here as well. Yeah, very nicely done. Just a small strike squad of small yeah, small strike squad of hovercraft managed to actually cause a tremendous amount of pain here. Very, very nice. Anti-nuke. Covering a lot of this area. Mom's Boy Toy has actually... <clears throat> interesting. Mom's Boy Toy has moved scouters and fighters all around in some direction. Somehow piercing all the way into this base and taking down a lot of the units over here. Looks like there's no 
anti-aircraft towers. So I'd love to see a, uh, a light anti-air tower built over here somewhere. Yeah, looks like that's what we're doing here. By Maws. Everyone's worried about anti-nuke. Rightfully so. We do have an anti- or rather a uh, nuke built here. Still charging though. This scout by Mom's Boy Toy was phenomenal. It is going to allow that team to build up some anti-nuke before that nuke finds its place. Which is very, very important. Crab Scratch has built a beached facility, a landing facility. <laughs> now pumping out a ton of grunts here on the front lines. Is this Pulsar going to be able to reach it? Yes, it's well within range. Do we have vision of it though? That is the question. We do not. We actually have no idea that that's even there. Interesting. I'm not sure if this Pulsar is going to come up. Those destroyers are pretty powerful. The shield battery is giving it all she's got, Captain. Ooh, yeah, that hurts that, that thing's going down. Ooh, it was so close to finishing, too. Yeah, that really hurts. Now there's no defenses on this front line. We need to see some artillery pieces, maybe. A rattlesnake or something. Starts up a generator. Oh no, it's in such a poor spot. Oh, that hurts to see. Yeah, Crab Scratch. Phenomenal play here. Definitely going to be able to take an impressive lead. Just abandons the, uh, the shipyard. Yeah, you can see he's just eating it up. Just making sure that whatever is back here is, uh, gets, gets devoured up. These hovercraft doing a good job putting in the work. They do take down the constructor, which is actually really nice. It does mean that there's no more, yeah, there's no more shipyard constructors for crab stretch. So actually, the naval, the naval days are done. Now this this bot lab is going to have to be addressed here. This landed bot lab. Now this front has also been secured, even going for the advanced metal extractors here. Very nice to see. When you have the advantage, you might as well secure it. These produce a whopping 9.2 metal per tick per second, I guess. Very, very impressive. Going to be a huge boon to the economy. Ooh, speaking of economy, huge hit right here. Looks like Amir's energy converters. Yeah, yeah, it looks like energy converters were just lit up by a couple of seekers that just managed to break into the base there and that hurts quite a lot Amir actually taps out man the uh the mental here is <laughs> becoming pretty shattered uh, somebody better take this because this is a ton of a ton of uh, production here a ton of ton of economy looks like Pama Bama is going to take over take control of this whole facility and the grunts move forward. Yeah, this is a great play. He's landed the grunts here, and now they're well in position to push forward past this base and, and cause a whole lot of problems back here. This is an air player, right? So there's not a whole lot of defenses back here for Mouse. Mouse? Maws? Not sure exactly how to say it, but either way. No no lightning turrets, no anything. You do see a beamer coming up. Not going to be tremendously effective, though. It gets a single kill. Yeah. Just a little too little too late. <laughs> and yeah, they see those grunts and they decide to tap out. The nuke finally launches, but man, is it just way too late. Excellent scouting by Mom's Boy Toy. I think more than anything, that was a that was a phenomenal, phenomenal gift to the team, scouting that nuke so that the anti nuke came up in time. It still lands, but they've already won the game. Phenomenal play by Crab Scratch as well, making that land on the side. I'm sad to see that Mom's Boy Toys play on this, this beachfront over here didn't work. Maybe if they had landed a bit farther to the right here, on this, the very edge of this peninsula, maybe it would have worked out a little better. But either way, that was a phenomenal game. We'll take a look at the graphs here, just see. Yeah, okay, interesting. So, so a lot of the a lot of the, the red team was actually outscaling the blue team by quite a bit. You can see orange, red, and... Yeah, orange, red, and yellow were all outscaling the entirety of the blue team, but they uh, they lost their mental. I suppose that that's a that's a mental victory here <laughs> for the blue team, but it's definitely one way to do it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.
your uh, your support, your 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 love and your support. It's very much appreciated. And I will see you all in the next video.